All right, so yo, how y'all doing today? What's the goddamn deal, YouTube? It's of course your boy, Volandis. And as always, before we get this video started, I need y'all to head over to the like button and beat his ass. Also, y'all already know the vibes, man. Do rag on, hydrated, and you know what I'm saying? Skin's looking good, you know what I'm saying? Knuckles not ashy, hands not ashy, none of that. So we feeling good, we looking good. Okay, so now that that is out of the way, let's get into today's video. All right, we're going to be going over five mistakes that professional photographers make. So I don't really like to call myself a professional photographer. I feel like the word professional is loosely used when talking about photographers. I'm a photographer on YouTube. I'm a photographer in everyday life. I just like taking photos. Um, do I take photos for brands and professional matters? Yes, I do. Um, am I is, is am I a business? Do I do photography as a business? I guess so. So that would make it my profession. I've also been doing it for like nine years now. So like, I guess you could call me a professional photographer, but there is nothing professional about me. <laughs> I am who I am. And I feel like everybody's experience with being said professional photographer is different. So I'm basically just going to give y'all five mistakes that I've personally made because I can't really speak for anybody else or what anybody else may go through. But these five things have definitely hurt my growth as a photographer. And as a professional photographer it's hurt my, I would say, business but if you're on your way to being a professional photographer these are five mistakes that you could possibly avoid before getting there and not having to deal with them so late in your career like me but anyway like i said i can only speak on myself and my experiences as a photographer so let's get into it all right so mistake number one is assuming you know everything now if you watch this channel you know that i personally don't care to know everything y'all know that i don't even pretend or try to act like i know everything so this has never affected me much in my photography career because if y'all know me y'all know that i don't care to know everything and i've never once pretended to know everything i've also never been a person in life that has pretended to be a know-it-all or wanted to be a know-it-all in any form of art or anything for that matter. I feel like once you do something for a certain amount of time, like if you've been doing one thing and you've been doing it for let's say six years, at some point for some people, because it's not as easy to control ego for everyone, it happens to the best of us, but some people like to think that they know everything because they've been doing something for so long and what they've been doing has worked for them. But no matter how long you've been doing something, I personally feel like there's always room to grow and there's always room to learn something new. I've been taking photos damn near every single day since I started taking photos. And to this day, I learned something new about photography or photographers or anything that has to deal with the art form. I learned something new about it every single day. So I know that I will never know everything about photography and i don't pretend to know everything about photography and as much as i love photography i don't care to know everything about photography but when you pretend that you know everything about photography or if you think you know everything about photography you kind of limit yourself in growing because if you know everything why would you need to learn anything else and you pretty much just stop yourself from growing as an artist or learning something new from someone else or something else. I'm 27, but I think when like I'm older, like 40, 50, there's gonna be new techniques of taking certain photos and s different styles of photography and things. To there's always something to learn at the end of the day. You don't know everything, you never will. And that's it. Don't pretend that you know everything, huge mistake. Next mistake is not stepping out of your comfort zone. So for me, this is definitely something that I struggle with, probably something that I've struggled with the most when I was up and coming and trying to figure out what my style is, what I wanted to do, and just figure out who I am as a photographer. If y'all know me in my earlier work, y'all know that I was in the hood a lot. Like the only thing I wanted to take pictures of was hood shit, things that related to the hood and just anything that was of <laughs> hood nature. And I love that. That was the type of photography um, that made me happy. It was the type of photography that I enjoyed doing. I was the type of photography that I looked forward to doing every single day. I felt very comfortable. I would go, I would take pictures kind of the same way um, of same similar things in a different way. And then um, that, that was that. Like that's basically all I did. I took pictures of everything, but um, all in all, that was like, who I was as a photographer. But it took me wanting to shoot something else to realize that I don't necessarily shoot 
outside of my comfort zone. So it took me stepping out of my comfort zone to kind of really fall in love with photography again, because I will say that like, from doing the same thing every single day and all the time and doing the same type of photography all the time, I kind of got bored with photography. It didn't, it, was, it didn't excite me as much um, because I knew what was to come and I knew what I was gonna be doing every single time. So um, I can't get excited about something that I, um, it's like getting a Christmas gift and you already know what you're, what you're getting. Like if you know you're getting an iPhone 13, you know, 10 days before Christmas, the day you open it on Christmas is not going to be as exciting as it would have been if you just opened it on Christmas. But it took me to uh, step out of my comfort zone, start shooting black women, start shooting, um, you know, things, start shooting things that I'm not necessarily comfortable with shooting to have that love and passion grow with photography again for me. So um, stepping out of my comfort zone, that definitely helped me grow as an artist. And it definitely just helped me kind of find more people and like my work find more people because when I was only shooting the hood shit, only people who liked the hood shit was, you know, tuning in and appreciating the work. But once I broadened my horizons and started shooting other things, I started opening up and started um, being introduced to a new side of people and new side of photography, which I love. So stepping out of your comfort zone is probably the biggest thing for me and the biggest thing that has helped me. So, and it took me up to like, four, three, three, four years ago to kind of realize that. So yeah. Another big mistake that a lot of photographers myself to this day still make is not planning ahead. So for me, I would usually shoot documentary style photography, meaning I could just show up somewhere and start taking pictures without any planning ahead. I just need to show up with my camera. But as I wanted to fully take control over my photography, the environments, the people I shoot with, and just everything, um, I started I started to have to plan these things ahead before they happen. As much as I just wanna be a running gun, pop out and just start taking photos type of nigga, I can't do that. I also found that planning ahead and actually having a true clear cut plan before going in to my photo shoots kind of help the photo shoot move along, especially if I'm shooting with people that I've never met before or um, presenting something to say a client or a brand, um, planning that out in advance so people can see exactly what's gonna be happening and what's going on has been helping me quite a bit. I still forget memory cards, I still forget film, I still forget forget lenses and, and things of that nature. So like, I'm not totally like organized and that good of a planner, but um, planning ahead, trying to do a little bit of planning before I pop out and take photos has helped me a little bit. Now, if you're a street photographer, you probably don't need to plan. Maybe you can plan a route, what time to get up. Um, a lot of people may think they don't need to plan, but like if you do anything that involves photography, I feel like it's a plan. If you're planning to take photos at a certain time, you got to plan to wake up. Planning, if you want to take, if you're a street photographer and you know people go to work at this time or get off work at this time, you might want to plan to be out there at that time. I don't know, bro, but planning has definitely helped me a little bit. So planning. Also, when, you, when you're a professional photographer, you feel like you don't need to plan shit. So I guess, I mean, I don't know who thinks that, but maybe, who knows? So the next mistake on this list of mistakes is taking criticism. So I've made a podcast about this, so I won't go too deep into this topic, but there's a thin line between criticism, talking shit, and people's personal preference. You have to understand which is which, because sometimes people give you true criticism of your work and that's okay. And then sometimes people are talking shit and then they're masking it with criticism. And then also, some people, they they have personal preferences and things that they like, and then they project that on you. Taking criticism isn't always the easiest thing. When you are comfortable enough with your work and you love your work and you're okay with the things you do within your work, then criticism will not bother you. And it's taken me quite a long time. It's taken me damn near my entire photography career to kinda grasp that concept of criticism because sometimes it's like I said masked with talking shit and people's personal preferences also if you didn't ask for it, it's kind of hard to just take it but people will argue that if you post your things on the internet then you automatically open yourself up to criticism which is true but basically I'm saying learn how to decipher between criticism talking shit and just people's personal preferences because if someone's giving you true criticism that's easy to take. If someone's talking shit, that's annoying, not easy to take. If somebody's, you know, just 
saying they wish you should you would have done this then that's just also something else that's annoying and kind of hard to take but um trying to figure out and just realizing what's criticism and what's not is something that i've struggled with and um something that has if you're not you know i guess strong or strong enough within like or like strong-minded with enough within your work can i speak today if you're not strong-minded enough within your work then sometimes criticism could get to you it can kind of hinder your work you'll you'll probably think about those things and um just isn't good mentally for artists so um not true criticism true criticism is okay all the other stuff not okay so just anyway try to decipher what's what's true and what's not last thing i would say that you know some professional photographers may take for granted is not being thankful so i'm not sitting here saying that you know people aren't thankful or appreciative of the things that they may have but as a photographer as an artist we we strive like i do this every single day i literally take photos every single day the end goal is no end goal i don't know what the end goal looks like because i don't have a real clear-cut um idea of what that is because at the end of the day i'm going to be taking photos forever whether that's for someone for myself whatever it may be if i make a million dollars off of this if i make zero dollars off of this i'm still going to be taking photos but um not being where you want to be artistically um that could hinder your growth and it's a mistake to look at things that way because i used to you know kind of be down on myself about where i was within my photography career and i wasn't thankful of the path and journey that i've had up until this point in my photography career sometimes it's hard to look back at all the accomplishments you've had and the things you've done when you feel like you're not you're not where you are artistically in your career but as artists we are our biggest critics we always feel like we can do better we feel like we should be doing better but you got to realize that you know you got to be thankful of what you have where you are in the process because everybody's process is different so i've learned to be thankful of where i am and where i came from and that has helped me you know appreciate my photography and my photography journey a lot more than i used to you can let little small things like not having enough followers or getting enough likes or getting enough jobs or whatever the case may be you can let these external small things you know get to you and make you feel like less than a photographer or person or whatever it may be but you got to remember that everybody who is successful has once felt like that and two have been in the same you know place and situation some people not everybody gets famous overnight everybody isn't a kardashian or you know a jenner so sometimes you got to work for what you want but all in all just appreciating the process and you know trusting the process as they say will ultimately make you unhappy or an artist so honestly i should have put this mistake is not trusting the process so yeah but anyway man those are my five mistakes that i've kind of struggled with while becoming a professional photographer and overcoming these um obstacles were not easy and i wish that you know somebody would have told me some of these things that i'm saying now when i was up and coming so hopefully it helped you out if not then i'm sorry but anyway man that's going to wrap it up for me if you're not subscribed to the channel please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button if you already subscribed i'm not talking to you because you already did what you had to do but we're gonna get up out of here, man. We're gonna go do some shit. You know the vibes. Let's get it.